This video shows you how Al Horford has been frustrating NBA teams in 2022's playoffs. Giannis has made just 15 of his 49 attempts when guarded by Horford, equating to 30.6%. When guarded by any other Celtic, Adetokounmpo's efficiency improves to 54%. Adding the final quarters of play in games 3 and 4, and Boston's dominated Milwaukee 77 to 51 over that span, with game 4 seeing the Celtics post an out of this world 97.4 true shooting mark in the fourth. Big Al responded to Giannis's poster jam and stare down by handing the Greek freak a taste of his own medicine, shockingly combining with Tatum for a cool 60 piece on Monday night. Cementing his Celtic legend, let's look at how Alfred Jamal Horford's rescued Boston and stay tuned to see the 15 year veteran's most impactful quality during his second tenure in Beantown. Before continuing, YouTube's analytics say that only 10.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in helping this video spread in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and my channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLowHoops. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Al Horford just kept shaking his head up and down after getting obliterated by Giannis' poster and stare down. No one knew what Al was doing as he'd just gotten embarrassed. Little did we know, Big Al was only using that altercation to gain as much internal motivation as possible. From that moment on, the unafraid veteran who's been through it all in the association torched Milwaukee from deep range, completely shutting off the paint defensively and he caps off his revenge on Giannis by thunderously rising up for the and one, giving Adetokounmpo a Kodak moment of his own. Through four games of this Eastern Conference semifinal showdown, Horford's averaging 19 points and 11 rebounds on 53% shooting from the field and 48% shooting from distance, attempting seven three-pointers per night. Having drained at least one triple in every one of Boston's 2022 playoff games, it's the calming presence both with his vocal leadership and deadly talent as a stretch big who can play both ends of the floor at an elite caliber, which the Celtic organization missed so damn much when Al spent the last two seasons prior to this one in Philadelphia and Oklahoma City. Entering the film room with the pressure on the Celtics as they're down 6-0 early on, Boston needs more pick-and-roll drives and dishes like this one from Marcus Smart. The perfect big-body screen from Big Al gives Smart an open lane, and with Lopez playing in far too deep of a drop coverage, Smart elusively fakes the floater and drops a saucy assist to his longtime teammate. Here, a double drag screen with Daniel Tice sees another dime dropping from Smart, as the Celtics PG throws an off-handed over-the-shoulder bullet pass cross-court for the wide open Horford catch and shoot. Smart's not known as a natural born playmaker, but Boston needs him to be if they have a chance at going the distance this year. The DPOY's eight dimes on Monday, combined with Peyton Pritchard, Derek White, and Jason Tatum, combined to give the Celtics 20 assists among just four players. Give credit to those guys for helping get Horford the open looks he received. On the other end of the court, Horford rotated over to the weak side to force Giannis into kickouts. In one-on-ones, Al displayed his lateral quickness and general defensive aptitude. Right here, he makes Giannis pay for putting the ball down before going up, showing off his quick hands to knock it off Giannis for the turnover. Speaking to his quick instincts and extremely intelligent defensive anticipation, right here, two Celtics are already on Pat Connaughton which would make about any other big man guard the three-point line instead of picking up, but Al's aware of Connaughton's tendencies, having clearly read the scouting report, and his presence on Pat after shuffling over to him forces a bad miss around the bucket. On that particular play, he knew his teammates needed help, but it's also how Al realizes when his teammates don't need his help, or at least not too much. Most centers would have gone for the block and fouled Holiday right here, but take in how Al's aware of Tatum having solid position, and just Horford's mere presence to intimidate Holiday helps force the miss. It's all the dirty work the Celtic center does on the back end of Boston's defense, as well as on the glass, little things that go unnoticed among casual fans that consistently make Boston a different team to try and deal with. But the most mind-boggling storyline in Game 4 was Al Horford's focus and execution offensively. In an outing that'll go down as one of his all-time best, 
playoff, Al was a game-high plus 20, tallying 30 points, 8 boards, and a block with a 3-1 assist-to-turnover ratio, helping Jason Tatum carry Boston to a clutch W in a must-win game while facing a hostile environment on the road, all with the reigning finals MVP going off. Big Al responded to the most dominant force in the league, and it was shocking. Making history on Monday, Al Horford, who's 35, tallied his first career 30-point playoff outing in his 132nd playoff game. Tatum, who's 24, tallied his 11 30-point playoff outing in his 58th career playoff game. According to ESPN Stats and Info, that's the third largest gap between a duo with 30 points of all time. Tatum and Horford's 30 pieces with Nuggets also made them the first pair of Celtic teammates to score 30 each in a playoff game since Paul Pierce and Ray Allen back in 2011. From my perspective, after seeing how Boston closed out Game 3, even though they lost, I knew they'd be fine heading into the next game. Even after they were down 10 near the end of the third and 7 entering the fourth, Tatum, Horford, Brown, among others' ability to knock down shots with poise, along with the C's raging league-best defense, made me pretty comfortable that Boston would secure the W in Game 4. That they did, and going back home for Game 5, there's been a clear shift in momentum here. Coach Ime Udoka slowly but surely figured out the best way to stop Giannis, which is creating a wall around the basket, relentlessly and collectively doing everything you can to cut off the Greek Freak's all-time great slashing. It's easier said than done, but if Boston keeps their wall around the basket intact and proceed to swiftly rotate out to the flurry of Milwaukee Buck three-point snipers, then I see them closing this series out in six games. This series gives me flashbacks of my Raptors taking on the Bucks back in 2019's East Finals because the Celtics have lethal weapons from top to bottom with a superstar in Tatum, just like the Raptors had with Kawhi. But more relatably, it's that the Bucks didn't have a solid enough third option to get it done. In 2019, Milwaukee had Giannis and Middleton, but no Holiday. And in 2022, they've got Giannis and Holiday, but no Middleton. I want to know from your perspective, whether you're a Celtics fan, Bucks fan, or neither, what happens for the rest of this series and why? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer. To so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks, today's Speaks winner is Ken Saludo, who says it may be recency bias, but I'm picking the Mavericks to win in 7. Luka's really one of the best players in the league, and he has a more than competent bench now. Yes, they still lack star power. However, playoff Luka is a thing, and he's such a good playmaker to the point that all his teammates need to do is hit their shots because Luka will hit them with on-point passes. Maxi, Bertans, and Bullock are also sniping and locking down this series. I like the Mavs' chances here, but they should never underestimate the Suns. If the Suns end up winning this series, then I won't be even surprised. That's how good of a team the Suns are. Appreciate every single take. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.